You know, as I look out across the pastures today, what I see is really quite a bit of diversity in terms of plant species. And that's obviously one of the things that we have found is critical for developing high biological activity and, and really restoring our ecosystems yeah. as they used to be. So I'm very, very pleased when I see this type of diversity out in fields because it, and we'll be talking a lot about that as we go through the day, but what we have found is that the greater the diversity and complexity that, that can be developed in our pastures, then the better everything functions. You know, that creates a biomimicry and an eco-mimicry yeah. that really more closely simulates what nature wants to do. So we also mentioned that we want to talk about complexity and diversity in plant species in our pastures. So if we look around us here, what we see is we see a number of different grasses present. So we see some orchard grass, we see some brome, we see some fescue, and there's also a little bit of reeds canary grass in this field as well. We also spotted some perennial rye. Uh, so there's a number of different, there's also some foxtail in here. Livestock will readily eat foxtail, particularly at mid-stage maturity. So we've got a number of grasses that are growing here. We've got a number of different legumes. So we have quite a bit of white clover that exists in this pasture. We've also got quite a bit of red clover in the pasture, as well as here and there, there's some, there's some alfalfa. So we do have you know, several different legumes present. And then we can also see a number of forbs. You know, as we look around, we can spot some horse nettle, we can spot some milkweed. We can spot some um, further down. We have some cockleburr. We have some lamb's quarter, uh, you know, and various other forbs. If we can encourage complexity and diversity in our pastures, then that translates into a much broader array of microbial species beneath the soil surface. And that's precisely what we want. Every individual plant species produces a different array of root exudates or root sugars. And those root sugars feed the microbes. But different classes of microbes are attracted to different classes of root exudates. So the more complexity and diversity in our plant species, the more complexity and diversity in our microbial species beneath the soil. So that's critically important in being able to do the things that we want to accomplish by building that microbial population, which is building our soil aggregate layer, solubilizing bound minerals in the soil and making them available for plant uptake, and being able to confer greater degrees of pest and insect resistance on our plants. So as we build that complexity, we get those benefits, but the other benefits that we get are that our livestock are able to better balance their own diet. If we have a monoculture or a near monoculture, that's the only thing they have to choose from. And if that particular forage species is not at its peak, and they're only at their peak a short time every growing season, then our livestock are going to be deficient in many of the different minerals and potentially protein, energy, and so forth. So our livestock with a monoculture and near monoculture are far less able to be able to balance their diets and to keep themselves performing at a very high level and to keep their immune system strong and resist disease and so forth. The more complexity and diversity in the plant species, the better able those livestock are to balance their diet, to also gain the medicinal benefits, the antiparasitic benefits that we desire. It also lengthens the grazing season. Again, monocultures have a pretty finite peak during their growing season. They have to build to that peak, to where they reach peak nutrition. 
They only stay there a short time, and then the rest of the growing season, they're gradually diminishing in their nutritive value. We all know that. That's why you have often seen or probably heard of suggestions to do forage sequencing. That's expensive. Forage sequencing always costs a lot of money and a high level of input. So rather than having to forage sequence, we're essentially doing that within every pasture by having diversity and complexity in our plant species. So as one individual plant reaches its peak and starts to diminish, others are coming on strong and filling in that gap. So our grazing season can start earlier in the spring. It can stay at its peak through the duration of the active grazing season and then last longer going into the fall.